question will walk through the accounting for a defined benefit pension plan and is slightly more complex than some of the questions we've seen thus far. Scarlet Corporation provides the following information about its defined benefit pension plan for the year 2020. We're given the current service cost, contribution to the plan, past service cost, actual return on plan assets, benefits paid, net defined benefit liability January 1st, 2020. There's our opening balance, plan assets opening balance, defined benefit obligation opening balance, and the interest or discount rate on the DBO and plan assets. We're also told that Scarlet follows IFRS. And we're asked to prepare a continuity schedule for the defined benefit obligation, plan assets, calculate pension expense, and figure out what amount will appear on Scarlett's statement of financial position. And in C, we're also asked to prepare all the pension journal entries. So the easiest way to handle this question is to use a pension worksheet. And I have one set up here. You can see items in as debits will not be in brackets and items in credits will. These amounts are all in the general ledger of the company. These amounts are recorded in the pension plan, which is a separate legal entity. The reason that we need to know what's going on in the pension plan is because the employer of the corporation is on the hook for any shortage or can record any, possibly record any shortfall or surplus, sorry, in the plan. So we need to make sure we know if the plan is underfunded or has a surplus and that will impact what goes on the balance sheet of the corporation. So to get started, let's look for the opening balances. Opening balance, January 1st, 2020. So we're given the opening balance of the net defined benefit liability is 400,000. It said it was a liability, so we're gonna put it as a credit. The plan assets opening balance were 1.6 million. Of course, because these are assets, we're going to keep it as a debit. And the opening balance of the defined benefit obligation was 2 million. So we're gonna record that as a liability, so 2 million. Okay, and you can see that the difference between these two items is the, is the funded or unfunded balance of the plan. So right now the plan is short $400,000. We have a liability of $2 million calculated by the actuary, but we only have plan assets of 1.6. And you can see that's why the corporations or Scarlet Corporations recording a liability of $400,000 at the beginning of the year. They're on the hook to make up that shortage. They've already promised to their employees what they will receive under this plan. They need to make it happen. Okay, let's start with our information here. So we've got the current service cost of 235,000. Service cost. So current service cost is going to go through our pension expense. So 235,000 as a debit to expense. And this is also going to increase the future amount that we need to pay out under the plan because as the employees are working for us, they are also increasing the value of their future pension for when they retire. And so the fact that the employees have worked for us for the past year has increased the value of the pension by 235,000. So that's an expense for the corporation. And it's also part of the future liability for payments that need to be made under the pension plan. Okay, we've got contributions to the pension plan of 262,500. Employer contributions, 262,500. So this is going to decrease the cash of the corporation and we're essentially just moving the cash into the pension plan. So this is gonna increase the pension plan's assets by 262,500. I find it easy to think of the pension plan assets as simply a cash account or an investment account. So we're just moving money between the two entities. It's past service cost effective December 31st, $50,000. So past service costs means that we've looked back and said, you know what, for those people that worked last year or the year before, not this year, but in the past, we really should have given them more value for their pension. So they've increased the value of the pension by $50,000. And both IFRS and ASPE require any past service cost adjustments to go directly through net income. 
So even for, uh, for us, we're not going to record this through OCI. It's going to be a direct hit to net income. And so this is where our $50,000 debit is going to go. And of course, this is also going to increase the value of the payments that we need to make under the plan because we just said, hey, you know what? We owe you an extra $50,000 of pension benefits. So we're given the actual return, but let's skip over that for a second. We've got benefits paid of $100,000. So what a common error is to show this as a credit to cash of the corporation. But the way that pension plans work is that the corporation makes contributions into the plan and the plan pays out any retirement benefits or any pension benefits. So the fact that the plan paid out 50,000 is gonna decrease the value of our cash and the pension or our assets. And it's also going to decrease our future obligations under the plan because now we've settled 50,000, that's 50,000 we don't need to settle in the future because the deferred benefit obligation is a credit balance, debiting it decreases it. Okay, now we're told the interest or discount rate on the DBO and plan assets is 10%. So we need to calculate the expected return on plan assets, which is going to be we're not told that the contributions were made throughout the year, so we can assume they're at the end of the year. So we're going to have 1.6 million times, what was it, 6%? 10% times 10%, which is what this is going to be. Okay, so this is going to decrease our pension expense because as we earn interest on our cash or investments in a pension plan, we can use this to settle our liabilities, some of our liabilities under the pension plan. So we're going to have this 1.6 million times 10% here. So we expected to earn $160,000 under the pension plan as a return. And this will also increase the value of our pension plan assets. Now, on the flip side of that, as our assets are earning interest, the deferred benefit obligation, this amount here, is based on the time value of money. And as if we assume that retirements are going to start happening in 10 years, of course, that's simplistic because people are retiring all the time. But if we think about it as a 10 year thing, every year we're getting closer and closer and closer to that 10 year. So we need to take into account the fact that that liability is getting closer. So we need to increase the value of the liability because the time value of money has less impact. So the interest cost on the DBO, which is also gonna be 10%. And we're gonna have this as 2 million times 10%. And this amount is going to increase our pension expense. So it's going to increase our pension expense by 200,000. And it's also, of course, going to increase the, sorry, this is a debit for increasing the expense. And this is a credit, we're decreasing the expense. And this is also going to increase the value of the different benefit obligation, which is a credit balance. So to increase it, we credit it. So on a net basis, between our expected return on our plan assets and the impact of the time value of money on the DBO, we are going to have a net interest cost of $40,000. Of course, in terms of the books of the plan, these go into the separate categories. Next in the question, we're told that the actual return on plan assets was 160,000. So we thought we were gonna make 160,000 and we made exactly 160,000. So normally we would have a line called remeasurement on plan assets, of plan assets. But what we earned on the plan assets is exactly what we thought we would. So there is zero remeasurement. Normally remeasurement under IFRS would go through OCI and it would hit the balance of the plan assets to increase or decrease it. But here it's exactly what we thought it was. So there's no remeasurement gain or loss. And we picked up all the information in the question. So let's sum our accounts, let's put totals here and see what we've got. So 
Okay. Oh, what did I do? Apparently I did not total that properly. Okay, so we've got our totals across here. And this is going to give us the answer to pretty much all the requirements in the question. We just need to take a look at this net defined asset or liability. So if you look at the pension plan, we've got a liability of 2.4 million and we've got assets of 1.9. So is this plan underfunded or does it have a surplus? Well, it looks, it has a shortage of 462,500. And this is what the corporation needs to record as their liability. The difference between these two items. So the corporation is going to show a liability on their statement of financial position of 462,500. They're going to show pension expense of 325,000 and a decrease of cash of 262. So we're asking the question to prepare a continuity schedule for plan assets. We have that right here. I calculate the pension expense for 2020. We've got that right here. Prepare all the pension journal entries and what pension amount will, will appear on Scarlett's statement of financial position at December 31st, 2020. Well, this amount will, will appear on the statement of financial position. So in terms of the pension journal entries, We've got the majority of the entries here. Let, what we, but what we need to do is record the entries just in the books of the corporation. Because right now, some of our entries are between the plan and the, and the corporation. So we're going to have uh, two entries that we're going to record. So we're going to go debit pension expense of this amount, 262,500. And we're going to go credit the net asset, net defined benefit asset or liability, 262,500. And that picks up this amount. Sorry, this should have been 325. So this picks up the pension expense right here. And then we're going to have the payments into the plan because this cash was representing contributions. So we're gonna have credit cash and debit, the net defined benefit asset or liability. Credit cash. And this is gonna be this amount right here, 262,500. So let's figure out what the balance of the, of the net defined uh, benefit or obligation is. Net defined benefit, asset, or liability. Maybe the opening balance. So don't forget, we had an opening balance of 400,000. Whoops, this amount here. Let's just pick it up from here. Okay, then we had the entries that we've got above. So we've got the contributions which are a debit, so these are gonna decrease it to 62,500. Then we've got the pension expense of this 325, and this is gonna be a negative. This is increasing it, it's crediting it. 25. So our ending balance, December 31st, 2020, is going to be 462,500, which is exactly what we have right here in our continuity schedule. So hopefully that makes sense. And that takes us through the conclusion of this question.